ladies and gentlemen i would like to welcome you to lesson four remember we are looking at the practical of amphibians and we are still looking at the external characteristics of amphibians and in this lesson we are entirely going to look at adaptations of amphibians to survive in their habitats in other words we are looking at how are these amphibians adapted to survive in their habitats we are looking at their body structures and how these body structures enable them to live or to survive in this what habitats and remember earlier on we had mentioned that the habitats of the amphibians are aquatic but also terrestrial they can live both in water but they can also live on land so it must be interesting for us to find out how their body structures enable them to survive both in water but also on land let's start with that picture there uh, i want us to there are many things uh, you can see but focus majorly on the eyes for now uh, what are you able to identify how many eyes are there uh -huh. how are they appearing where are they located on the body so i want us to describe so when you look at those eyes clearly you realize that there are two so we can say it's a pair uh -huh. and then when you look at them uh, critically realize that they are actually large and protruding when you compare the size of the eyes with the size of the body you realize that the eyes are actually large relative to the size of the head or the body and they are bulging out so they are protruding and then where are they located they are located on top of the head but on the sides so scientifically you can say that is a dorsolateral position uh-huh and what is that advantageous yes that position there enables them to see a wider field of view or to view on a wider area so we can summarize by saying that a pair of large protruding dorsolateral placed eyes to give the animal a wider field of view in its habitat so that is how we can uh, how i have described the eyes you can also try it out in your own way when you look at your specimen you can look for befitting language for describing the eyes great so we can move on to another picture there uh, you can see what are you able to see have you been able to see the anything there it's difficult to differentiate between any living organism there and the background so what do we call that is that advantageous to the survival of organisms mm, yes probably yes actually yes it's it's advantageous because this inability of other organisms to recognize you means you are safe in case those organisms are dangerous so that kind of arrangement is what we call camouflage resembling the environment so as to evade danger so we can say that the characteristic they have a characteristic skin color uh, some are dark brown especially the the toads for camouflage and hence protection against predators do you know the predators of these organisms? Yeah, major snake and their relatives. So what about if it is a frog? You realize the frogs are characteristic greenish in color. And when you find them in between, sandwiched between the weeds, the water weeds, they are indistinguishable. So they camouflage. So that is perfect camouflage that uh, enables them to evade predation you should be able to see that from your organism 
how about that when this organism is jumping i want you to be observant to their shapes so you may realize that their shape how do you describe that shape mm -hmm. it is pointed in front right it is pointed anteriorly so we can say that uh, that is a streamlined shape is that advantageous yes that is advantageous because it reduces water resistance in case the organism is moving in water or even air resistance in case the organism is uh, jumping or hopping on land so we can say the body is streamlined to reduce air resistance or water resistance during swimming that's great and then from here i want us to focus on the legs so when you look at the legs especially the hind limbs for now what are you able to see i can see that they are long yes i can also see that they are webbed they have webs in between the digits so we can talk about that is that important does that contribute to the survival of the organism yes so we can say that the hind limbs are long with webbed digits or webbed feet or webs between the digits for leaping long distances the length is to enable them to leap or hop long distances and the webbed feet is to increase surface area for generating propulsive force during swimming in water uh, well that's great another feature i am trying to look at is uh, that those patches on the dorsal side of the skin i am able to see that uh, there are some black patches especially for the toads uh, the frogs may not have really prominent patches there but the toads have them and those patches are called the parotid glands or in simple terms you can call them the poison glands and those poison glands if you disturb the toad they will secrete some milky poison there called the bufotoxin and that bufotoxin is of course toxic or poisonous to the predators so why do they produce the bufotoxin is to scare away the predators is that important to the organism yes because it will evade predation in that way so possession of poison glands on the back of uh, of the body and uh, on the head on the head they are actually two and uh, this provides defense against predation or foreign attack so when you get your specimen you can observe critically the location of the parotid glands and then you can match them with the function we have mentioned here yes so we proceed with the let's look at the four limbs what do you observe from the four legs you realize that they are mm -hmm, they are shorter they are stout and they are also muscular is that important yes together with their location uh, enables the organism to absorb shock during landing after leaping so when the organism is, is landing when the toad is landing or the frog the four limbs are the first on the ground and they absorb the shock to enable the organism to land safely but at the same time they also when the organism is standing they stretch to increase the height of the organism so as to elevate the head up to keep the the head off the ground so that the organ can see see the predators or the prey so that is the advantage or adaptation related to the four limbs okay how about the hind limbs in terms of their muscles you realize they are mass much more muscular 
and uh, the hind limbs are very muscular and this is for generation of strong propulsive force during leaping or during hopping or during jumping so when they are jumping they kick backwards and they propel the organism forward so because of those muscles there so that is an advantage yeah an adaptation of that organism similarly on the limbs still either four limbs or hind limbs you realize that uh, these limbs are jointed they have joints when you stretch them you realize joints are there and what uh, is the advantage of joints wherever joints are, they are used for flexibility they enable flexibility especially during uh, locomotion so that is also an adaptation for to enable an organism survive in its habitat so yes for flexibility during locomotion either in water or even on land um, still near the head there is a round patch behind the eyes called the tympanic membrane or the eardrum what is that for so the external eardrum receives sound waves for hearing for them they don't have the external pinna like we do the mammals for them their hearing system starts from the eardrum called the tympanic membrane and is widened it's enlarged and can enable an organism to hear or to detect sound both in water and even in air so because of the location they are dorsolaterally located that's great so have you tried to open the mouth of the toad or frog if you have not please try out it's interesting when you open the mouth it is very wide interesting wide so we can say that's a wide gap for consuming prey of a large size did you know that a gra this toad even a small toad can consume a very large grasshopper yes they can and uh, even these small rats can be consumed by a large toad so because of that wide gap of course this organism is not able to chew so they don't have the capacity to chew so they just swallow so the wide gap facilitates even the swallowing process so that's great i want to thank you so much those are not the only adaptations but those are some of them you can continue i have given way you can continue observing your specimen looking out for more peculiar characteristics that the organism may possess that may enable them to live in the organism in, in the habitat describe the structure and give the function when you are giving adaptations you describe the structure an organism has and then give the function of that structure that will be your adaptation otherwise thank you very much for now we meet you in the next lesson uh, that is lesson five stay